so for, for those who don't know me, my name is Eamon Moore. I'm the, I'm the CEO and co-founder of a company called Hikari, which was, was found, founded last year uh, based in Dublin. And um, um, up to that point, I had a company called Emit for the last 15, 16 years. Um, and it was in the latter years we became a globally recognized partner, in particular with Microsoft, uh, which culminated in us winning Global Partner of the Year with Microsoft in 2016. Um, so we've seen a lot over the last number of years in terms of managed services, IT services. And in about 2016 as well, we, we set up a CRM practice and a business solutions division that was solely focused on, on data. And that's where we saw a lot of growth in the industry. We saw a lot of companies recognizing the value that data now has in their organization. Um, but we've seen a lot of companies, including ourselves, struggle with centralizing that information. Um, so as part, as part of that, we, we saw a big growth area in, in, in the world of data. Um, and again, that resulted in us exiting uh, the company in email was sold last year and we spun out that business solutions division into our new business called Hikari um, and we're very proud to be be one of uh, Nimble's leading partners here in, in Ireland and throughout Europe and we're, we're on a, a great journey with them in rolling out these kinds of solutions to, to SMB customers in particular. So today uh, I'm delighted to have uh, John Ferreira join us. John is the founder and CEO of Nimble CRM and I've known John for quite a, a long time now and we've We've always threatened to do partnerships together, and we've, we've come together to, to, to roll out Nimble to, into a variety of customers. Um, and when I think of uh, when I think of, of CRM and, and Mr. CRM, as I call him, I think of John. John was the, the founder of Goldmine CRM, and many of you will know that from, from back in the day. Uh, built a huge, successful company, uh, a very good strategic partnership with Microsoft, and we decided given both our successes in that world of, of partnering with Microsoft and other vendors like that, we decided to come together and bring our two companies together to, to form that partnership and to, to help uh, all of our customers centralize all the communications with, custom, with, with their customers and various contacts that, that they have. So, you know, and especially uh, John is, is, is a big believer in social selling. and It's something that we quite do quite a lot in our own organization. So delighted to have John here with us today. Um, so if we look at the agenda. I'm going to I'm going to hand over to John now in a minute. But you know some of the things we're going to talk about, and, and John's going to kick off, and he's he's going to talk about how you need to transform your company into a modern workplace. Uh, and we and we look at you know how the motion of selling, of marketing, of interacting with customers has changed dramatically over the last number of years, and how the need to have that kind of centralized, customer centric vision of of the various people you deal with is, is hugely important now in this in this new world. Uh, John will also talk about the modern buyer and about how they now research a lot of our companies, you know, a lot of our products and solutions well before they even interact with us. So, you know, they're very much along that, that decision making process and that journey of selling even before they, they reach out to us as, as service providers or, or, or businesses. Um, and then I'm going to take up and I'm going to tell you a bit more about our journey. Um, you know, we often believe that and John would be the same believer it's 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 more real I suppose we tell you about about some of the challenges that we had and you know I had an organization for 15 16 years that amassed a huge amount of data amassed a, a, a large amount of customers and how we we struggled to bring that all together um, and ultimately we were successful in meeting that challenge uh, by working with the nimble team and and, and tra transforming our own organization um, and then we'll, we'll talk about some next steps and then we'll run into a QA. and a so that's it for now so John I'm going to hand over to you Eamon, thank you so much for uh, that kind introduction and for gathering uh, your tribe together for this conversation. I'm going to talk about uh, how are you going to transform into a modern workplace to grow. And, and this I, uh, example of metamorphosis, I think, is really perfect because I talk about how we need to change to grow. And that's really the, what life's really about. I'm going to talk about how to turn your business into a gold mine and, and tell you a little bit about how I've done that twice in my life. But ultimately, I'm going to talk about why uh, relationships are driving the evolution and revolution and renaissance in uh, sales and marketing. I don't have to be the first to tell you that the world has changed radically around you. Every second of every day, billions, trillions of conversations are occurring. And most of us are feeling a bit overconnected and overcommunicated. I can't tell you how many times I walk down the street and people don't even look around. They're staring in their phones as they walk. It's crazy. But ultimately, your network is your net worth. Your brand and your network are going to help you achieve your dreams in life. And ultimately, I hope your dreams include helping other people grow because I, I think that's why we're on this planet. And ultimately, it comes down to your brand because you need to stand out. 
So I challenge each of you to Google yourselves to see if you even show up on the first page. And let me pause for a second. Please ask questions throughout uh, this uh, uh, presentation. Michaela is going to be answering them in the background as well as um, uh, compiling them for Q&A at the end. But your brand is so critical, not just your personal brand, but your professional brand and your company brand. And those brands help you to build a community and relationships. But relationships aren't a LinkedIn connection. They're not a business card. They're, they're relationships that are ideally mutually beneficial and they're earned on intimacy and trust. People buy from people that they like, know, and trust. And ultimately, those trusted relationships should help you to scale who you help grow. Because the great Zig Ziglar said, the more you help other people get what they want in life, the more you'll get out of life. But you can't help people unless you, quote, know them. And in the old days, when I went into, when I taught salespeople how to sell, I told them when you go into somebody's office, look at the walls, look at the books they read, the degree of the school they went to, the knickknacks they collect. We connect on the commonalities of life. I call it the five Fs of life, family, friend, food, fun, and fellowship. And today we're doing that electronically, getting to know one another. And I think this is just the first wave of a huge change of the way that uh, we'll all work, play, buy, and sell. And many of you might be feeling like this, whether you're talking about your personal relationships or your business relationships, or like this, or you're overwhelmed with how do I connect with the modern customer today? But ultimately, if you're not standing out from the crowd, you're dead today. And I can't tell you how many businesses are closing their doors because they're not changing. They're not modernizing into the modern workplace. And you're not going to grow your business by telling people how great you are. Stop talking about your products and services. People don't buy great products. They buy better versions of themselves and they don't want to buy from Slick Willie. They want to buy from a trusted advisor. And how do you do that? How do you basically connect with that customer? In the old days, we used to yell at them about how great our products and services were and expect them to line up like lemons in front of our salespeople who could bag them and tag them. And now customers have done 70% of their buyer journey before they ever pick up the phone and call you. And when they do call you, they may know more about your products and services than your salespeople do. So ultimately now you need to change with that. Stop operating like a castle with a wall around your company and walls between departments. You need to understand your customer's journey and it's not a sales funnel anymore. This sales funnel was actually created in the 1800s in France. And this is how they used to teach startups 10 years ago about the buyer journey. But I don't even think this is correct anymore. I think it's more like a pretzel because ultimately you don't just sell to somebody once. The pe easiest people to sell to are people you sold to and get referrals from them. And this buyer journey, if you Google McKenzie customer journey and Michaela can put the link to the PDF inside of the questions area, it'll tell you about the customer journey. I, I encourage you to uh, read about this, but I'm gonna quickly just go through it. There's a trigger that makes people buy or look or start buying their process. In my case, it was my TV died in my house. So my initial consideration said I immediately eliminated Sony because that's the one that died. And I had another Sony product that had died recently as well. And in building my uh, consideration set, I didn't go to websites of TV companies. I didn't go to a TV store. I started to read reviews from trusted advisors and from peers. And then once I gathered my information, I actually went to a store to look at the TVs. And at that point I made the buying decision. I actually bought a Sony crazy, but it was the best product, best price. And even after the purchase, I had a post-purchase experience where I kept researching, isn't that silly? Because I wanted to make sure I bought the right thing. It was only after I had it for six months, a year, where I fell in love with it, that I actually had a loyalty loop where I talk about Sony TVs and actually bought two more. And this is the journey your customers are on and you need to be top of mind throughout that whole process you need to have influence with your customers. So how do you get influence? Well, recommendations from people that they know are this number one form of influence. It's not advertising. And so how do you stay top of mind with your customers? You know, there was an actress, she was also an entrepreneur. She said, out of sight is out of mind and out of mind is out of money, honey, Mae West. Well, Mark, you're not gonna do it through marketing. 
because building a brand isn't only about marketing. I believe a brand is built on the promises that you make and the experience that you deliver. Much of that experience is delivered through your customer facing business team members, which means you need to help build your team members brand in order to humanize and build the company brand. And if you can align the promises that you make and the experiences deliver, you can build a gold mine. So marketing isn't just for marketers. So I believe that if you want to build your company brand, you should teach people to fish and they will figure out you sell fishing poles. In other words, give your knowledge away and do it through your team members, not necessarily your company brand. And so rather than telling people how great our products are, I teach people how they can be better, smarter, faster at the promise of our product, social sales and marketing. And then they see us as a trusted advisor and then they consider our products. And so there's a methodology for this. I call it the five E's of social business. Educate, enchant, engage, embrace, and empower. You educate by giving away your knowledge or other people's knowledge in and around the areas of promise your product. You enchant people by being relevant and authentic, and you engage with the intent to help your customers grow. Here's an example of somebody. If you just go Google Valor Ashfar on Twitter, you'll see that this person you know, back when I first snapped this, I think he had 113,000 followers. I think he might even have a million right now. Um, Michaela, why don't you look that up and let me know. Um, but he doesn't just share data, information about his business or his products he sells. He shares content that humanizes his brand about personal and professional passions in life. And that humanization has created deep connections with people. So he just doesn't talk about Salesforce or his products or his services. In fact, he used to work for a startup in Boston and he basically was in customer service and he was so good at building and sharing content that the company got noticed and sold and he got hired as the head of digital for Salesforce. Another friend of mine who was head of marketing and content at LinkedIn, Hootsuite and Slack, Coca, on a daily basis, shares content to inspire and educate other people. And what that does is it helps build his brand and it also helps build the company brands. So how do you build influence? You could build influence by basically identifying influencers in and around the areas of promise to your products and services. And so once you've done that, then, and, and here's a tool that you could use to do that, something called BuzzSumo. So if I wanted to find influencers in content marketing, I put the word content marketing in there, it'll show me influencers with high reach and relevance or content uh, with high reach and relevance, which I could then share by hashtagging it appropriately with the category. In this case, it was B2B and, and social selling and then attribute the person's name. So this is the formula for you to build your personal brand and company brand you just identify influencers in and around the areas that promise your products and services, share their content, hashtag it appropriately in the right categories, attribute their name, and share that on your personal and professional and company brand identities. And you can use tools like Buffer uh, to share that uh, content with. And then there's tools to listen uh, as well. And that's the key thing, is you need to listen and engage because Dropping content is like a fishing lure. And if you don't pull the hook when the fish bites and basically start a con conversation and not a conversation about how you can bag and tag them, you should start a conversation about how you might help that person grow because I think that service is the new sales. And so if you enter every business conversation with the intent to help that person grow, you will get more customers than you could ever manage. And you're gonna have a contact management problem. Because if you build a great identity and then start sharing content on personal and professional and your corporate identities, you're going to start having so many connections and conversations, you're going to have be overwhelmed and need a tool to manage it. And that's what I've been doing now for so long. I actually invented contact management and CRM before Outlook or Salesforce existed. And I did it because I struggled. This was my contact manager in 1988. It's called a day timer. I think in uh, the UK area, Ireland, I think it's a philo, philo fax or I, I, I'm not sure what it's called. But basically, we communicated with Pink While You're Out Slips. We did our forecasts on spreadsheets and I was overwhelmed. And I started to look for a tool that would enable me to integrate 
email, contact, and calendar, and sales and marketing automation. I couldn't find it, so I started a company called Goldmine, started on $5,000, never took a dime of venture. We grew it to almost $100 million a year in revenue and about 10 million customers. And by the way, uh, the UK and Ireland were our number one market overseas. I mean, I, I think that, uh, that, that that market today is, is one of our number one overseas markets as well for Nimble. And uh, at 40 years old, I sold a uh, gold mine. And by the way, gold mine was Microsoft's number one ISV. Steve Ballmer used to come and do the monkey dance at our conference every year. And we did that by partnering with Microsoft, by driving adoption of their products and services. And we're doing that today with Office 365 and Dynamics. So I was able to sell gold mine at 40. I uh, spent 10 years raising three babies, which is the most precious gift the universe has ever given me in my life because uh, family is everything. Also gave me time to swim in the social river and I started to see the immense power of social. I was gonna change the way we work, play, buy and sell. And I saw that our contacts and our activities were basically broken. Because today, whether you use Office 365 or Gmail G Suite, your contacts are not connected to your email or calendar and every team member in your company has a separate contact database so you're missing what goldmine gave the market which wasn't a crm at its heart it was a team relationship manager for the whole company not just for salespeople, not just for prospects and customers but for everybody in the company and and that's what's missing today in g suite and office 365 because contacts are separate for every team member contacts don't have any insights or context they don't have uh, calendars linked to contacts. They don't have email linked to contacts. And don't get me started about CRM. I like to joke, but it's true. The reason they call it Salesforce is you have to force salespeople to use it. Nobody in the right mind would use a CRM if they weren't beat on to do it. That's because CRMs aren't built for you. They're built for management and you work for them. They don't work for you and you have to go to them to use them. And they're more about command and control. And I think many salespeople feel like this about their sales manager or CRM because it slows them down. And much of their time is wasted Googling people before a meeting and they have to log their appointments and their emails. And ultimately, I think the CRM should do that for yourself to empower your customer facing business team members to be more effective. And I think also that's why there's an explosion of tools that you have to buy in order, in addition to the CRM sales intelligence, email tracking, templating, all these things that you need to buy. And ultimately, I think it's one of the big reasons why there's 225 million global businesses and less than 1% use any CRM. Most people CRM as a spreadsheet or email, and that's why we built Nimble as a layer on top of Office and G Suite, as well as a gateway to Dynamics, because ultimately people need something to get started with. And as they grow, you could actually use Nimble within Dynamics as a sales enablement tool because Nimble unifies your email contact and calendar and your Office 365 contacts and then combines them with Dynamics contacts and lets you use your Office contacts in Dynamics and then everywhere you work. And so the whole idea is that today in your company, you might have MailChimp or QuickBooks or Xero or, or Office or G Suite or Salesforce or Dynamics or... Uh, some customer service program. And what you need to do is unify all those disparate contacts into a singular system that then works back inside all those systems and then anywhere as you're prospecting and connecting like Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And so that's basically what, uh, what I've done uh, is I learned how to build my brand. I saw there was a tool that was missing for relationship management and engagement and basically built Nimble and uh, it's been really well received. It's one of the not top CRMs in the, um, in the world today. And the reason I built it is because I believe that life is about relationships, that you need to build a tribe around yourself and your business in order for you to achieve your dreams in life. And it's kind of like um, a garden, if you think about it, and my wife happens to be a sustainable landscape uh, and horticultural therapist. And she often brings me out into her garden and, uh, and, and shows me things. The other day, she showed me a monarch butterfly caterpillar, which um, she talked about. She plants milk thistle, I think, in the garden to attract the monarch butterfly caterpillars who eat the aphids so that she doesn't have to spray in the garden. And she does that with other things as well to attract 
uh, different things into the garden to create a self-sustaining uh, environment. And isn't this what we're trying to do in our businesses? Because if you think about it, it, it it's not just prospects and customers that you engage with in your business. At Nimble, we engage with editors, analysts, bloggers, influencers, third-party developers, investors, advisors, and prospects and customers. And it's everybody in our company that does that. And so what I think we need to do personally and professionally is to treat our relationships like a garden, to, um, to share stuff that attracts the right people uh, and businesses around us, and you're going to do that by being relevant, authentic, personal, and with an intent to pay others forward. Because I really believe that we're on this planet to grow by helping other people grow. And uh, with that, I am going to turn it over to you, Eamon. Great. Okay. Well, listen, th thank you, John. And, uh, you know, great to get your insights and, and, and particularly with your experience in the CRM game and, and, and building a really successful business and in the middle of, of building another one. Um, we're, we're delighted to get some of those insights and that's something that I know we spoke about in detail that, that resonates quite a lot with uh, our thought process and our views uh, on the CRM market and, and the, the contact management market globally as well. So, so delighted and thank you for that. Um, so I suppose at, at this point what I want to do is kind of take over and just share about how we had a lot of those challenges. So a lot of things that John mentioned there were concerns of mine over years in business about how we, we tracked and, and, and monitored the communication with our customers, how we had some joint up thinking across our organizations to make sure we were giving the best service possible. Uh, to our customers, you know, and, and, and even simple things like, you know, having that uh, knowledge um, and that knowledge base that was there for, for all parties to see the interaction with customers. Because there's nothing worse if, if I go into uh, a customer and I, I'm not aware of an interaction that's happened and it could be a bit of news about that customer, and but yet one of my colleagues did and we don't track that in a centralized location. And unfortunately, that, that information has been stored across a number of disparate loc locations in, in various companies. And we had that challenge and it was something we, try, we tried to fix. We tried to look at a various number of CRM tools. Um, and we, we thankfully now found one that we want to, that we, we, we're moving forward with. So in terms of um, Hikari, what we do is we help people get be better value and better use of the data. And then ultimately, if you get a better understanding of your data, you can better service your customers and build a more successful business. And we did that on the back of, of EMIT, which was a managed service business that we had. And as I said earlier, we learned a lot over those years about running businesses, but more importantly, about the interactions that we had uh, with, with our customers. But if I, if I look back at, over that time, and if I look at how we actually interacted with our customers or with any contacts that we had, this is where the challenges started to appear. So, you know, we, we're lucky enough that we had multiple forms of communication. We were very active on social media. We were very active on, on various forms. But if I look at how customers interacted, or third parties, or suppliers, interacted with, with EMIT and Hikari, there's, a, there's, there's just a, a, an example of it. So we've Office 365 email, we've auto tasks or ConnectWise, which for those of you on, on, on the call today who run managed service business will be aware of those tools. We had Dynamics 365, we had Skype, we had WhatsApp, we had Zero for accounts, LinkedIn. So my point is that there was multiple opportunities, multiple interactions, and you know, I was, I was concerned as CEO and, and founder of that company that said, are we missing out on opportunities? Missing out on opportunities from both a sales and lead generation point of view, but also missing out on communications with customers that are important in the service that we delivered. So maybe it was just a simple request that the customer might have. And we just wanted all that to come together because the more information we have about our customers, the more trends and analysis we can do on our organization. Um, and the more things that we can do. And I know, I know Damien O'Brien from SME Matters is on, uh, is on the call here today, and, and we discussed this in detail, and a practice that he did was helping, helping many uh, businesses identify verticals that they specialize in. And you can only see that if the data is there, and if it's in a number of, of, uh, of locations, it's very difficult to bring it all together and analyze that. So, you know, they were the challenges, and, you know, from, from a sales and marketing team point of view, asking them to, to, uh, to, to track that information and enter that information perhaps in multiple locations or to go to multiple locations to try and find the information was hugely challenging. And you know, the, you know I, I always reference the point of the buzz around getting a deal closed or an opportunity uh, you know, can be often undone by the, the elongated process of entering that opportunity of information into a, into a CRM system that doesn't come naturally. Um, and if, if I looked at the real reason we, we tried to transform and we want to transform our own organization, the challenges and concerns we certainly had was, was siloed customer communications. 
information about customers and details, important information about them in, in different locations that weren't brought all together under one roof. As I said earlier, misleads and opportunities. Like anyone who runs a business, involved in the business, or is in, in any kind of department in your organization, you know, leads, opportunities, sales are core to what, what we all do to build our brand, build our businesses, and we don't want to miss any of them. Data entry is quite cumbersome. So when I looked at existing CRM systems, and I've been pretty much in sales all my life, so if I left an organization and there was a good opportunity there, I'd have to go into a CRM system and perhaps go to the, the, the customer's website. I'd copy and paste all that information in from their website. Then I might go to their LinkedIn profile to copy in their personal information. I could be at least 20 minutes putting that information in, and you think the buzz of, of that meeting and that opportunity that we have is all but gone by the time I have to manually type that information in. Um, social was a big part, and, and for those who know me, know that we do quite a lot of social across various things, particularly LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, it's how we've had some of our biggest successes in date in interacting with people at, at a global level. Um, so I, I really felt that was hugely important to how we build our own brand. Um, so I wanted the CRM system to try and integrate that. And complex workflows, you know, and we've been involved in the CRM game now for the last, you know, in selling solutions for the last four years, in consulting in CRM solutions and uh, migration projects for the last 16 years. And, you know, the one mistake I saw a lot of time was, was customers and businesses trying to jump from an entry level uh, uh, application they're using for CRM right up to something that's really bespoke and complex. You know, and, and I always felt it was better to take baby steps. It was better to to go, go and solve core issues and get the main problems that the, the business has in terms of CRM or sales or account management, contact management, and solve them first of all. And then when you solve them and you get usage and get buy-in from, from the users, then let it grow. Let it grow in terms of the functionality and let it grow out to something um, beyond that simple CRM if that's the way you need to go. But that, that was a huge important for me. And again, no single source of the truth. Where where do you go for that one that that one source of information about customers? You know, is it and in our challenge it was in multiple systems and you couldn't get that all up view of um of the customer. So after after doing a lot of research and you know um, we do a lot of work as many as you know with Microsoft particularly uh, at, at a global level and we, we try to tackle this problem in conjunction with Microsoft and we were we were introduced to John and the team about Nimble and you know this is one of the first slides that I saw that John presented to me when when we looked at doing uh, doing a partnership together you know and that for me it just brought everything together in terms of contacts activities uh, email messages and deals. Uh, the integration they have with multiple uh, business apps was very attractive, and particularly the social piece in the middle. But it brought it all together, you know. And for the first time, I was starting to see something that could unify all contacts from every location, and that certainly was attractive uh, to me in, in, in terms of the goal and how we want to transform our own organisation. So, if you look at the, at the flow of it, typically what we did on the left-hand side there, you see you see um, you know, various uh, inputs that we have across Outlook, Excel, you know, there's post-it notes, there's various systems, but you bring all that together all under one roof. And then, you know, when I talk about data and talking about the importance of it then as well, if you look, if it's all under one roof as it is in the middle slide there, but then you can start to report that data out on the right-hand side. So you see tools there like Flow or in particular Microsoft Power BI, then you can analyze the data and that's extremely powerful. Like when you bring it all together, under one roof and you have the ability to analyze it, that's when the real magic happens in business because you can start to change business, you can start to change customer behavior or your own behavior internally and you can see how things really, really change for an organization and as you scale up that, that business. So when I look about and you know, as you can imagine, I can't show live data off our own system. So we've taken some demo, some demo data here, but this is essentially what we start every day. Um, you know, and, and I think it's really, really important as organizations. I often say to people and ask them, what's the first thing you do? And they say, well, I go into Outlook. You know, an email, as great a tool as it is, we spend too much time in email. You know, in, in Hikari, for example, I, there's two screens I go into first thing even before I go into email. I go into this screen as a CRM, and then I go into a range of Power BI dashboards, which reports on the overall business across the various solutions that we have. But this allows me to see exactly what's going on, you know, in terms of the events I have on the left-hand side, the deals I'm doing, the tasks that I have. But this is all fully integrated, and we'll show some of that integration now at, at, at the minute. Um, but one of the main things, uh, again, this is a, 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 a demo data here, but Ross Keating is probably contacted John's. 
this is one of the main things that drew me to, to, to Nimble. This was the time saver. I, I mentioned earlier, but one of my biggest frustrations was around that uh, manual entry of data into a CRM system, you know, because I had to have all that data in about the company, about the prospect, because otherwise then if we tried to link it to our finance system, then finance would give out to me that I didn't put all the information into the CRM. Marketing would give out to me because it's not all the information is there for, to, to market to those prospects. And it was really cumbersome to get that information in. This is this this is what draws draws me in and draws a lot of people in. So what you're seeing there is 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 obviously a LinkedIn screen, but you're seeing the nimble toolbar and the smart context on the right hand side. So what happens there is uh, if Ross was was a, was a contact of mine, if I met Ross in a meeting and I I definitely saw a lead or opportunity uh, and a proposal for Ross then as well. Quite simply, what I do after meeting is I go to LinkedIn. I, I, go, uh, I could go to Twitter for that matter, any other social feed, but LinkedIn would be my main source of business. I would then look at Ross's profile and the nimble toolbar and the smart contacts here automatically takes all that information in, all the social information about him, his company, and all the key bits of information I need to know about Ross as a resource. But the most important thing is with a click of a button, he's now, him and his company are in our CRM system. And within seconds, I'm adding a lead or an opportunity or proposal to, to that. That for me saves a huge amount of time. You know, I can't tell you, uh, you know, the benefits that I have, particularly being out in the road now, pounding the pavement, trying to build a new business and trying to bring in new customers. This has been a lifesaver um, uh, for me in particular, and I know the rest of our team would use it on a day-to-day -day basis as well. But this, this is nimble. It's built on social. It's built on social integration. I think it's really smart what the guys have done here, and this was one that really drew me in first of all. And now you see what the rich data we get about, about customers and prospects. There's a complete overview again of Ross around his company's position. And um, we have activities, you know, with messages I can send here. I can assign a deal or an opportunity to him. I see a social history there towards the bottom of the screen. And on the right hand side, I get a smart summary about about Ross. You know, again, key information about customers that we need to know when we're going in to meet them without having to go to numerous locations, whether it be social uh, or on-premise based or cloud-based applications that we use to get that key bit, key bit of information. So I'm armed and ready to go um, the, the, the minute I'm walking in to see Ross in this example. And as you can see there, the status screen in the middle tells me when he was last contacted, the lead details that he has and the pending deals that we have all there at the touch of a button for me and, and, and gets me ready to go for, for that meeting and that interaction with that particular customer. And I think around one of those other concerns I, I alluded to earlier was around missed leads and opportunities. So, so I don't know how many of you in, uh, uh, attending today's webinar, how you deal with, um, with leads and opportunities coming in. But one of the ones that, that we did, and as a small organization, you know, where you might not have dedicated people for this, you know, uh, you might have a generic email on your website that might be a distribution list in, 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 in email that goes to one, two or three people. And we are often what, what happens is people are busy in their day. It might go into a shared mailbox. It doesn't get lost. It gets lost and doesn't get action quick enough. You know, and the way, you know, as John described it, the customer journey now, you know, when customers contact these days, they've done the research, they're ready to engage, you know, and perhaps they're ready to buy at that point. So you, you can't miss those opportunities. You need to be able to strike while the iron is hot and, and get at them. And what I particularly like about the, 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 the Nimble application is, in the same way it brought the information about LinkedIn, it sits very nicely into, which for us is Office 365, but can equally do it across uh, Google Apps or, or, and G, G Suite, but it extracts that information from that email that might come in, into that shared mailbox, for example, if it's a shared marketing mailbox, and it drags all the information about that resource, and immediately we can be alerted that a new lead has, has become available. So even if our some of us are on the road, and, or it's missed by somebody in the office because they're involved in something else. It's visible for all the team to see. And, you know, that, that really puts my mind at ease now that, you know, those leads and opportunities uh, don't get buried uh, in, in, in a mailbox somewhere and it can be action. Um, you know, another thing that I use quite a bit is the calendar integration. Again, allowing me to, to have a rich calendar information there for the meeting that I have. So I'm, I'm up to date with all information, you know, whether it be social, whether it be a change in information that's inputted by the team. And it's, it's, it's all linked into the customer interaction for, for myself and for team members to see that, you know, I, I'm out at a meeting with a customer. And again, to see to be knowledgeable across the organization that this is what, what we're doing with that particular customer. 
Another one that, uh, that that we had as well, and you know, this is really why I alluded to our old company, Emit, is we, like we had 15 years of contacts there, and um, that were transferred over from system to system, and ultimately when we when we moved to Office 365. Um, and but contacts were there, but not really used because again, you know, it was just amassed over a number of years. And what we did with, with our with our where our Nimble implementation was across all our team, we took all our contacts and we uploaded them into Nimble. And you know that for me again was 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 a really a really smart thing to do from the Nimble point of view and have that integration because now it gave us all access to the wider uh, contact base that we have. You know, when, you know, it's 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 very difficult to sign new customers. We all know that it's much easier to sell to existing customers and people that we know. And to have all that information in one system now is uh, it has really helped us. And you know, there's an element of artificial intelligence that that's built into uh, the Nimble platform, which we use quite a bit as well. So what it does is it recognizes the deals that I'm closing or the deals that I'm pitching. And there's a there's a space in the widget within the the, the Nimble um, today screen that actually prompts me based on the contacts list that we have for customers that I might want to reach out to for similar deals. So again, really smart and, and, and really good for, for generating leads uh, in, our, in our sales pipeline. Um, in terms of uh, Teams and Skype, another one that, that we use quite uh, quite often in terms of interaction with customers, whether it be meetings. Um, but again, the Nimble toolbar sits quite nicely in there for us, allows us to drag the information in about the conversation. But again, allows us, if we're on a joint session, to, to, to look at the contact information that we have about the various attendees. So again, it's just what, what we're trying to do is to make sure you know that all those um, options that people have to interact with us, there's an easy way to to uh, to record that information and have it and have it available. I know as a, as a Dynamics user ourselves and uh, internally in the organization as part as part of our Microsoft partnership, we we use them in, in tandem now with Nimble. And you can see there on the right hand side, what it's actually doing is it's using the power of the Nimble implementation and the power of the Nimble smart contacts to enrich the information in Dynamics. So again, you know they they, they can they don't need to be used exclusively. They can be used in tandem with each other. And there's a lot of benefits around the, the Dynamics implementation. But we really, really good that we're able to integrate that technology and get the best use of your your dynamics investment um, and maybe some of you today in the call use zero I know more and more it's becoming quite a, a popular uh, application but again we use it and have used it in both businesses and a, a lot of information can be, can be brought in again to seamlessly enrich the the, uh, the contact that we have but again the the interaction with the, the customer at a finance level in terms of chasing perhaps money or invoices or or, or, or renewals etc can all be brought into the nimble conversation so again back to my point about having one source of the truth about everything like as, as equally as important, you know, it's important when I go into a customer that if there is an issue with an invoice or there is an outstanding amount that we can't be selling all the time, perhaps that we have to, to help bring that money in. Uh, and it's good that we have that information ready available for us in Nimble, again, as that one source of the truth. Um, and I know for, for many that we invite along today, um, again, who are in the IT partner trade, so many of you will be familiar with the likes of Autotask and Nimble. But again, another example of using a specific package uh, focused on the IT sector and about how Nimble and the smart app and the toolbar can again enrich all that information that you're having in ConnectWise, but again, with the view of, of bringing it all into one centralized system. And I think that's, that's, that's ultimately what, what, what we're trying to get out of, uh, of, of, our, of our Nimble investment. And for, for, for those of you on the, on the move, my, like myself, a very seamless app, um, you know, again, easily updatable, leads, opportunities, customer interaction. There'll be certain things that, um, that will help you and empower you to do your role. So after every meeting I have, um, because it's my, con my contacts and my calendar is synced up with Nimble, it will, add, it will prompt me to say what was memorable or what are the action points from that meeting. And again, I can easily type that in and have it, have it available for all the, uh, the team to see. And for me, as as a CEO of the company and uh, and heading up business development and sales, I get clarity now around the pipelines. You can see it's easy to build in a sales pipeline. We, we have a, a number of pipelines that we were in across sale across sales leads and opportunities. But what I like here, this is all drag and drop that you're seeing here. So as 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 a deal moves from qualification to decision maker or needs analysis, I simply drag and drop that with my mouse and move it through the stages, making it very easy to uh, to move to move it all the way up. Um, and and something that we we uh, we didn't quite do, and we do we do a bit more now in, in the new business. I have to say, and we're always probably guilty of it. We didn't market enough, you know. And you know, I, I think it's a question we need to ask ourselves. You know, uh, I remember about, about two years ago, I went into a customer 
to tell to, to meet up and, and and do a catch up with them and this was a, a little while after we'd opened up our new data and business solutions division and the customer said I, di- I didn't know he did that you know and i think as as somebody running a company that's the worst thing you can probably hear about your organization i wasn't aware you delivered that service so we we took that on board and, and we made sure that our customers now know exactly what we do by using um, marketing and group messages so by sending out things all in a GDPR compliant way, I might add, um, but you know, a simple way to market customers, group messages, and you get rich information then as here as well to see when it was opened, who has an, who has an interest about the email that's sent, and if you are going to spend some time doing follow-up calls, at least you can start with the ones that you know have interact, interacted with that message and open the message and the information that, uh, that you have sent on. Amen, can you go back up to that previous slide there? I wanna, I wanna emphasize something here. Hmm. So I loved how you said that the easiest people to sell to are the people that you've already sold to and get referrals from them. And I actually believe that there's a gold mine in your disparate business systems in your company and that we ignore them. Many companies ignore the contacts in their accounting system. And these are people that you previous sold, previously sold to. And so what I hear that Nimble customers do is they unify those disparate contacts, the ones from your Office 365 separate contacts, the accounting system, and in your case, the ConnectWise system, which is all the people that you've implemented systems for. And by the way, Nimble bidirectionally synchronized with ConnectWise for those partners that are listening. And I noticed there's a few partners listening today. Um, and into a singular system, enriches with people and company data that you could then use to segment and outreach. And this group messaging, you can send separate small messages. So rather than blasting your whole database with one message, you could target certain people with certain messages, which is increases the relevancy and uh, and open rates. But more importantly, the emails come from your business email, not from our kind of automation email, which makes them more personal. And you can send templated emails, um, trackable emails in a group, or you can send them one to one, which is really, uh, I find really powerful for uh, our customers. So I just wanted to interject that. So go ahead to the next slide. Great, thanks, John. Um, so uh, I, I suppose that that brings us to nearly to the end of uh, our proceedings. And um, you know, first of all, to thank everyone for the time today and for attending uh, the, the webinar. Uh, thanks to John uh, in particular for for his insights. Um, you know, and we would be more than happy to, to talk to him uh, who is interested in, in having that discussion around um, Nimble, um, but also around you know the, the, the steps that we carried out to transform how we operate our own business. You know, and I think it has been a, a pretty much a game changer for us. It's far easier now to to, to run um, uh, contact management, customer management, uh, account management in our organisation by now having everything under under one roof, you know, and I think it, you, you will never get one system that will fit all, but I think what, what, what we've done successfully here is we've managed to bring together all the solutions that we have to run our organization, and we, um, and we allow them to, to sync data and to have it all under one roof for the purpose of a complete overview. And for, for any of you who need that in your organization, like, like we certainly w- we would in our organization, it, it's, a really good, it, it's a really good place to be. Um, and, 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 and it's, I'd, like it's, to, I'd like to add a little something here. And while I'm doing that, can you pass me the screen for a second? Yes. So I see in the audience that we have a number of Microsoft business partners that are listening. And so welcome to the Microsoft business partners uh, that are listening out there. Um, I, I really believe that uh, there's an opportunity to do partner to partner to partner. Um, so if you think about it, uh, there might be some partners, and this happens to be one of the partners that are out there that are listening today. Um, and by the way, did you know that Nimble works inside of uh, your applications, including your browser, where you can Nimble companies and take a look at them? Um, but uh, I think that uh, certain partners have certain skills, and other partners have other skills. And I think that all partners can work together. So if you're a partner listening today, selling Office 365, or maybe you're not selling Office 365, and want to partner with another partner to help start selling Nimble on top of the solutions you're selling, uh, Amen's uh, uh, establishment is uh, uh, open to partnering with other partners to help them implement uh, their their Nimble systems. Uh, so you could learn a lot from uh, Amen and his organization. So that's one thing I did want to point out. Also, this is a Q&A time, so please do ask questions uh, in the Q&A section. Uh, and then lastly, while I'm here, while we're waiting for questions, I'm just going to show you a little bit about 
how Nimble works in my desktop just live so you can see it. So the key thing that Nimble does, and Eamon, if you see any questions, just feel free to interrupt me. The sure. key thing that Nimble does is unify the contacts, the email, and the calendar into a central system that, uh, and this happens to be Satya Nadella's record, uh, that basically maps the identity on people and company, brings the data down, builds a digital dossier on the person and their company, records every interaction that you and the team have with the person, and I'm not going to get into all the other features that Nimble has as far as the basic CRM features, but let's just say that it does the basic thing. But the key thing it does is builds a relationship manager for you and your team that keeps itself up to date and then works back where you work. So when you add it into Office 365, it's automatically added into Outlook Mobile, Outlook Desktop. And then whenever you open up an email, you'll have a complete view of who the person is, the history of interaction, the ability to follow up and follow through. That not only works inside of your email, but it also works inside your contacts as well as your calendar that then basically gives you uh, these really beautiful records everywhere you're working. And then it also works inside of your dynamics. So if you're inside a dynamics and you're looking at a contact, basically Nimble will bring up that record, which is a unification of your office and dynamics, LinkedIn, Twitter, contacts, all of your business apps. And then it works back in all the places that it works. So if I'm sitting here seeing that somebody is talking uh, to me or about me, I could easily go in and see who they are basically by nimbling them. So nimble then works in all the places that I'm working. And so I think that's the key thing that you really want is to have context and insights on the context that you're connecting to wherever you're connecting that with them, even if you're prospecting with from them on a article. So if you're reading a business article and you want to know who a person is, you could literally nimble them and nimble will not only give you their uh, record, but it'll also give you their contact info. If you give nimble first name, last name, company, domain name, and, uh, and then enable you to outreach uh, effectively. And so that's just a sort of a brief overview about how nimble is the uh, simple smart serum for office in G suite that works for you by building itself and then works with you wherever you're working. Happy to talk more about any specific uh, parts of the application. And by the way, we also work inside of other systems like uh, Salesforce uh, uh, and other SMB CRMs as well. And uh, like I said, we, uh, we connect with over 140 SaaS, 160 SaaS business apps. And that's the key thing that Nimble provides is that team relationship manager, which I think all businesses uh, need. And uh, with that, Eamon, do you have any uh, questions uh, that you see in the, from the audience? You know, no, I, th I think we, we've dealt with them all on chat uh, directly there, John, so I think we're okay. Okay, perfect. So uh, Eamon, why don't you close this out? So that, that should wrap up proceedings. Uh, as I said earlier, thank you to everyone for attending um, and thank you to John for, for, for his input and insights. Um, and hopefully we get a good overview today, um, not only of, of the nimble solution uh, and what it can do, but also the journey that we went on as an organization about how we changed um, the, in, internally, how we, how we interact with customers and we bring all that information together uh, and, and house it under one roof now as well. So we'd be delighted to talk to you. To more, please feel reach out to to, out to me directly via email or LinkedIn, um, or you can email us at nimble at hikari.ie, and we're, we're happy to offer a free one hour consultation for everyone who's attended today. Um, and also, you can try it for yourself. So, if you see there in terms of the uh, offers, so if you go to nimble.com slash offers slash hikari, you'll be signed up for a free 15 day trial for you and your team members as well, and you get to, uh, to sample it and see it for yourself. So, again, thank you for your time, and we look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you so much, Eamon. We have one qu last question from Don Buckley. He had a question about how can you best simply simplify the unlocking of your data for digital transformation while not disrupting your current core business model? I think that's a fantastic question, Don. Thank you for asking it. And I think that if you were to try to um, implement a net new system and force people to use it, that you might disrupt your core flow. And I think that's what Eamon was saying is that they had Office 365, they had Dynamics, they had Zero, they had ConnectWise. That was their sales, marketing, uh, accounting, um, uh, customer service applications. So they didn't have to disrupt their business because Nimble went in and unified the disparate contacts, built a single unified record, and then worked back 
in the tools they were using. So Nimble works inside of each of those different business tools, providing value, but not necessarily disrupting the core model, but actually adding value to it. And I like to say for partners, that's like a Trojan horse that you can go into any business and it doesn't matter what tools they have because every business has some tools and you can go in and add a relationship value on top of any uh, tools that they have and then land and expand because Nimble is Azure based with common data services, Power BI flow, Power Apps coming soon will enable you to then build net new systems or tie it into any systems that they have to build additional uh, workflow automation and reporting. So uh, Don, thank you so much for that question. I couldn't have thought of a better question. And with that, Eamon, you have a wonderful evening there in uh, Ireland and uh, I will talk to you soon. Great, thanks John, thanks everyone, bye-bye.